So I just finished up the base coat here uh, using my raw umber. Now this is very lightly applied. For the boxes it's fine because it has a slight gray undershade. So what I want to do next is take my soft suede and I'm going to take my wood panel here, which I'm going to move everything out of the way real quick. And as you could tell, probably, and you could guess, I'm just going to get off as much as the paint as I can on the brush, or off the brush rather, and I'm going to start dry brushing on more detail into the wood, making sure to go against the grain on each side so it ends up not going into those cracks and actually giving me more detail. Let me just get a bit more here. Might need a bit more paint. I'm also going to do this to the chest as well and the planks. And after this little bit, I have the base shading of the wood done. Now the next step for me, which I'm going to have to put this just to, so it doesn't end up getting uh, dried up in my little container of water here, is to get a smaller brush. Uh, this one will work, as you can see here. And I am going to go in with my festive green metallic paint. Now I bought this stuff from uh, Pat Contains. It is the dazzling metallics. And what I'm going to do is just very carefully. I wanted a different color for this box since it's supposed to be like uh, sort of magical loot. You know, they might have had a different metal, like mithril or something, put around it just to have it safer. And I'm just going to very liberally put on a ton of green just to line that. Now, you could do this with uh, this color here. This is an older model, uh, Rishit or older bottle rich espresso I got that back in 2010 I think I've still used it every day um, well not every day but on every build nearly that has a metallic color on it this one I wanted to do something different test this out because I just got it I might use it even on a fade dragon sculpt I'll do one of these days for a friend so I'm just gonna line up a bit more of that get rid of a bit of the paint and just so I can uh... there we go we end up with this it could also be like copper the way it oxidizes it turns a green color so yeah we have this for a chest now this is painted so what I'll do next is while that's drying or you know what I'll wait until after it dries I'll cut back to when that's ready but what I'll do then is add another coat of brown and start flocking this so see you then so after letting that dry I'm gonna go on to my actual final coating of brown now this I'm gonna put thickly on around the base making sure not to touch the actual model itself uh, and what this will do is act like a glue temporary glue until I spray my actual uh, spray onto the the grass and there we go so that was done and the next thing I'm going to do is actually put this into the water so it doesn't dry up on me 
gonna have to dig through here real quick and get my ground cover. Now all of these products are from Woodland Scenics, except for the static grass for this part. Oh, looks like Goliath fell down there. So what I'm gonna do is take a bit of my uh, my mixed grass, and I'm gonna go around where I put the actual uh, brown paint, making sure to not get any on the chest or anywhere important. it a few times and now that I have this I'm gonna dump it back into the bin if I can rinse and repeat this time I'm gonna go let's say with a bit more of a uh, a light my uh, light I forgot what this burnt grass color Just gonna give a bit of a breath and finally go back over with my mixed grass again. Maybe get some uh, sandy color in there. Get it back in there. Now you can't see this because I am holding it right now, but uh, believe me. This is very tedious work and I need to actually be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna use a brush, a dry brush actually. Let me find it. Uh, what's a good size brush here? Uh, you'll work. And then what I'll do is around where there's boards and stuff, Make sure to get off a bit of what remains so you can see everything clearly. Now this is just an assurance to make sure it is nice and clean and finish when I go to spray it. Instead of having clumps of green on the actual model. It's a bit like excavating a dinosaur actually. And I'd say that's pretty much ready. Now the next step would be to spray. So I'm gonna cut back after I spray that. So, see you then. So, as you can see, I gave the final spray onto this. Um, it's a bit glossy right now because it's wet. But, uh, while it is wet, I could go in and uh, fix up areas I missed. You know, where there's patches of grass missing. Maybe needs a bit more. And then kind of lightly with your finger tap it down after a few minutes uh, tapping it down actually allows it to uh, stick better to the model itself and as you can see I have it covered now so what I'll do is set this to the side open this up again and dump whatever contents I can get off of it back into my mixed uh, color which uh, I'll reuse to get a random look. So I'm going to put this back onto this base. As you can see. It's not too shabby. Um, I use this method on all of my scatter terrain too. Now keep in mind I did miss a few areas where the paint didn't hit enough and uh, different various problems occurred. But that shouldn't happen to you if you like cover the bottom. 
which I will fix this, patch up those little missed areas after this dries. So I'll cut back when that's ready, and after I patch it, to add on static grass. So with the model dry and everything ready, we can finally get on to static grass. Now this is the flock box and uh, static grass from uh, World War Scenics, which is a company based in the UK. Uh, you can find them on eBay if you look up WWS Scenery. They're a fairly small company. Uh, I'm going to have to grab this. So what I like to do next is take a bit of tacky glue. And there we go. Uh, this little bit here was clogging it. Yep. And what I'll do is add bits of glue onto the actual model, making sure to be careful. Don't allow any runs because uh, you'll be flipping this upside down and you do not want to have drippings. So uh, here we go with that already. So for this model, because it's so small, and delicate what I'm gonna do is take it take the alligator clip here and clip it like that somewhere it won't get messed up and I'm gonna set that aside for now now it's time to put on the gloves or else I'll shock myself which is not fun um, this stuff is strong enough. Do not connect the circuit, whatever you do. So, do not touch the alligator clip while you're turning it on, because you will shock yourself. And then, I just put it over it like this. You can see how the hairs jump. Shake off excess. I'm just going to move it around a bit more. Shake off the excess. And I'm going to set it down. Turn the machine off. Take off my gloves. And remove this from the clip. Now, if I'm correct, I'm going to kind of preen this a bit. Clean it off. Give it a few little blasts of breath there. And you have static grass on there. Now, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. And that was how to make some chests.